Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome back to another video. As you saw from that intro today, we're going to be doing a glitch, sort of transition animation thing that can be used with not only text, but also with video, and it's actually a pretty easy effect to accomplish. I'm gonna be taking a look at a few new tools inside of Fusion that we haven't really looked at on this channel yet, so it should be a pretty exciting one. So let's roll the intro and get into it. All right guys, so to create this glitch effect is actually pretty easy. So obviously we have this little cool little glitch. Now we do need a few things. We need this sort of pattern here that I've created very, very quickly in Photoshop. So you can either create your own or head to the link in the description where I've got the project file for this setup that you can just download for free, it includes this file. But all this is, is just a Photoshop file of different layers of white, light gray and dark gray and I've just used a flat-ish brush to kind of create these sort of rectangular shapes. And I've just gone through and created this image, saved it out as a PNG, and this is all you need, right? You just need different levels of luminance, so white, light gray, dark gray, in an image with a transparent background, save it out as a PNG, and import it into DaVinci Resolve. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new Fusion composition, just call this glitch text, and we're gonna drag it down onto the timeline and jump across into Fusion. All right, so what we're gonna do is quickly create a background just so that we have something for our text to go on. And we're gonna drag our text down and merge it together. So let's just type something out. We're gonna call this glitch and we'll scale it up so that it's a lot bigger. So to create this effect, we're going to use a new node that we haven't looked at yet on the channel called the Displace node. So let's select the text, hit Shift Space and type in Displace. And you got that there. You want Displace, not the 3D one, obviously the 2D one, and just hit Add. And it's not really doing anything to start with and that's because the Displace node sort of relies on an image with which it uses to displace what's ever plugged into the background or in the input, which is what the text is. So we're actually going to use this image. So we're going to drag that down onto our node tree and we can rename it if we want glitch texture. And so the displace node, this is quite something, this is something that's quite common in sort of 3D graphics where it uses, where it uses a black and white image to displace something else. For instance, we're using it to displace the text. Now, it uses the values between white and black to determine what goes in and what goes out. So if we plug the glitch texture into the foreground of the displace, it's now using that image, so this image, as the displacement for the text. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place the media out node in the viewer so we can see everything and have a look at this displacement node. So currently it's set to a radial displacement, so it's gonna start from the center and work its way out using this glitch texture. So if we change some of these parameters, say like the refraction strength, you can see that here we have the glitch transition. Already that's a pretty cool effect, coming in from the center and going out. And you can see if we push it to the limits, you can kinda of see this outline of our texture, so we wanna be a little bit careful of that. Now, because we're doing a glitch transition, we don't really want it to be radial. We kind of want it to go X and Y, so up and down. So we're gonna change that to X and Y. One thing to keep in mind, if we just open a double viewer, is this glitch texture directly basically overlaps this image. So if this was a lot larger, we might want to increase the size of the glitch texture by just shift space, adding a transform node in there. And then we can obviously increase the size of how it's displayed over the top, okay? So if we have that, so we can increase the size. It all just depends on, you know, the image that we're trying to displace. So now that we have it set to X and Y, the only options we need to change is the X refraction and the Y refraction. And you'll see if we hit the X refraction, it starts to split the image in the direction of the glitch and it is using the texture and obviously the wire refraction is going to do the vertical and so it's actually super super easy to animate so if we just go to say frame 20 all we're going to do is set a keyframe for x and y go forward a couple of frames just bump it right up go forward a couple of frames and we're just going to reset it really really simple and now if we play that back we've got this really quick glitch 
And we can obviously go through again, set a couple more keyframes, go forward a few more, and we can, you know, play around with it. Go forward a few more, reset. And just like that, like super, super easy, guys. Just created this little glitch. Boop, boop. Really cool. And pretty simple node structure, so you can create some really cool titles with it. But I know what you've been thinking this entire time. Yes, this is all well and good. We can use that to glitch out some text and it looks pretty cool. Can I use it to glitch out some video? The answer is yes, it works exactly the same way. So let's drag some footage down onto here from our last tutorial. Just gonna shorten it down because we don't really need it super big. And with their playhead over the top, we're just gonna jump into Fusion. And this is gonna work exact same way. So media in node selected, shift space, displace. We're gonna chuck that displacement in. We're gonna to go to our media pool, drag our glitchy image down and gonna plug it into the foreground. Now, this is what I was, if we go X and Y, just like before, this is where I was talking about we might need to resize the image. As you can see, it's not covering the entirety of this video clip. So it's really simple, like I said, shift space, add a transform node, and then we can just scale it up. So now it's going to affect the entire image. And again, now we have our glitch and all we need to do is with the displacement is pick a frame. So let's just do it at the start here. Reset everything, set a keyframe, go forward a bit. And we're gonna just go gung ho on it, go forward a bit and re And just like that, we go back to our editor and we let this play through. Now you can obviously play around with that, add a little bit of chromatic aberration, split the RGB values. So that's how you create a really simple glitch animation that can be used for a variety of different things from titles, footage. So there you guys have it, a quick and easy sort of way to create a glitchy kind of animation, whether you're doing it to create a title sequence or a transition, it's pretty easy to accomplish. Like I said in the video, if you wanna check out the link in the description, I will have the project file there that you can download and use for yourself, but it's not like it's super complicated to do by yourself on your own computer anyway. But link is there if you want to check it out. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos like this one. And until the next video, guys, see ya.